How you doing? I'm Tobin. This is my return trip to the McKinsey River. Last time I was here was just about a month ago. That was the shave that I used Soap Commander's Embark. It's been raining, hailing, had some serious hailstorms. In fact, uh, post a picture or I'll clip a little video of that hailstorm to this video somewhere, maybe right after this part. I'll probably put it a little later in, but today I'm heading out to use uh, basically an all PAA shave is what I've got with me today. There's the McKinsey. I'll be at the exact same spot that I used last time. I don't believe anyone's gonna be here. The weather's been horrible. There's my spot. We're setting up right down there. That's the, the backdrop from last time. The forest is waking up. Oh my goodness, look at that blue sky, that's gorgeous. It's been a nasty day. Springfield, Springfield, Oregon, the Pacific Northwest is like a woman. Maybe I should edit that part out. <laughs> I won't go there. I'll stop. Stop, Toby. Stop while you're ahead. So, welcome. Let's get this party started. I'm going to start setting up and I'll talk to you in a minute. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. So today, I did bring this piece. That's the piece that I forgot on my last outdoor shave. Basically set up from the same spot that I set up in last time. Awesome Sauce Splash, Awesome Sauce Soap, my Ascension Select. Inside the Blade Bank I have a Strange Lit from Phoenix Artisan, my Scoop from Smiley, and the Peregrino from Phoenix. Yep, it's pretty much an all Phoenix shave today using the lather lid uh, for my second time on video. This is the water that's directly behind me. Here's where I'm standing. Don't have a whole lot of room to mess around. Let's get this going. Hey, how you doing? So back up here on the banks of the McKinsey River. We call this place Hendricks Bridge. The reason why it's called Hendrix Bridge, back in the day, uh, before the bridges were built, Hendrix Bridge, uh, there was a ferry that got people across the river, just downstream from where I'm standing, and that original ferry was operated by the Hendrix family. So, I guess, after they got it built, the bridge, they named it after the Hendrix family. And so. Technically, that's where I am. If you look it up on the map, I'm on the I'm at, I'm at Hendricks Bridge on the banks of the McKinsey River, a few miles from home, and this is where I was a few uh, about a month ago when I used um, Embark. That was a sunny day. Sunny day. I'm an amateur. But you knew that. I'll use my mirror. I'm gonna stop looking in the camera. I'm going to stand off to the side, and I'm going to take off my beanie even though my head's going to freeze. If I get too cold, I'll put it back on. Oh yeah. It was sunny last time I was here, about a high of 55. Today it's about 40. We've got hail storms. Some rain, mostly a whole bunch of hail. Uh, it actually accumulated and covered the ground. The weather changes fast in western Oregon. If you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, it's likely to change. It's kind of a saying we got around here. Using one of my all-time favorite fragrances, 
It's an homage to Perazzo Green, an Italian classic. The soap that I used was probably three or four years before I knew that there was any artisans or anything out there. Um, I didn't just use green. Uh, I used green and red. And then I eventually started using blue. I've never been a fan of, of white, just the fragrance. Um, doesn't really speak to me. But blue and green, those are my two favorites. And uh, I love the sandalwood as well, the red one. So this is Doug's version of it. If you've ever used the soap or the cream, the crope, you know, it comes in a little green tub, you know that it doesn't really smell exactly like the splash, the aftershave. So Doug's mission was to create a soap that smells like the splash. When it first came out, I only bought the soap and that's because I had it as a, just watch a little chipmunk run by in front of me. I had it uh, as a companion piece with my Perazzo greens. Um, on the banks of the Willamette is when I use my Perazzo green stick and I showed you my splashes there. And so that's generally what I've been doing. Uh, let me get this. Uh, I always gotta decide how I wanna do things. I wanna be a little more careful so I don't have to dig anything out of that freezing cold water. And it's probably about 40 degrees itself, maybe 38. It's mostly, excuse me, it's mostly um, snow melt. So it really keeps this river full. And so this came about, out about a year and a half, two years ago. It's a double, double homage to CDB. If you watch very many cha uh, shaving channels, you know Christopher David Bradley. I've watched him for years and I've learned a lot from him. Imagine most people who will view this video and shake their head up and down, yes, in agreement. If you never read the sales page for Awesome Sauce, I highly recommend that. And if you never, if you're one of the few people out there in the wet shaving community that don't, that doesn't know who CBB is. I invite you to check out Chris's channel. I am CDB, Christopher David Bradley. Type that in the search bar and it'll pop up. I did a horrible job lathering my first go around. That's okay. Stuff's slicker than, slicker than ice. That's what it is. Hope you're all having a good weekend. Tomorrow's Easter. My family and I, we, we celebrate Easter. Um, we're going to, to church, putting on the dresses. Well, I probably won't wear a dress this year. My girls will be. Um, we go to church every Sunday, most, most Sundays. Um, but Easter for the Christian is, I'm sure as you know, very special. Um, that's about as far as I'll go with that. I just want to respect everyone's religion, but for those of you or lack of religion, if that's what you choose to do, but I just wanted to wish anyone out there who is celebrating it a happy Easter. This has always been one of my favorite fragrances. I overload on purpose when I go to these outdoor shaves. I've, I've been noticing it more and more, and I think I've done it subconsciously as well as consciously, and it's actually become a conscious thing. Um, looking back, anyways, that's a whole nother side story. Shave. Squirrel.
fragrance notes. Are eucalyptus, menthol, uh, citrus, lavender, and oak moss. When I was looking up the scent notes earlier, I came across something. I don't know if I really want to touch on what I originally thought about or not, but. This soap is absolutely fantastic. It lathers super easily, like all of Doug's in France soaps. So, I think we can all agree that you can't judge someone solely by their past, right? I'm 45 years old, and the man that I am today is not at all the man I was to say even 30. I, I was more squirrely at 30, believe it or not, than I am at 45, okay? Um, yes, yes, Bradley, I, I just got a haircut and my dome is cold. Now I'm bonking the tree branches and I shake, rattle, and roll. Not into the river though, I'm telling you it's cold. So, ten years ago, even at 35, I, I still wasn't exactly the guy that I am today. I like to think I've matured. I like to think I've gotten a little wiser. I like to think that I've picked up some knowledge. Not just you know shaving knowledge. But life, right? Hell, 10 years ago, my oldest was 14. Our son who just turned 18 was eight and my daughter was four. So I now have a 25, 18 and a 14 year old. Lots changed in 10 years. And just real briefly, I don't wanna focus on politics or religion on this channel but I want to say this real quick before I move on to what's on my mind I serve a God of second chances and I live in a country that believes in second chances years ago and I believe that, okay? With all my heart, I believe that. If you ever wanna go into why I believe that, DM me, I'd love to talk to you on the phone about, about either one of those two points. But because of that, get my mirror so it's not shaking all crazy. Because of that years ago, damn it, I keep bumping that tree branch. Years ago, I decided that, that also meant that I'd have to be a dad, a father, who honored second chances. When I first came to those realizations and those kind of thoughts, dealing with two young boys who were very much like their dad. And that wind's drying me out. It's really cold, too. Um, Maybe I'll use the phone, it's not shaking so much. Let's show this camera. <laughs> trying to keep myself kind of off centered so the river is more centered. So, raising two boys. One day, I don't know when. I just came to the realization that, like my, like so many other things, I had to be someone who honored second chances and that didn't hold people, that I didn't hold my present feelings or thoughts about someone 
regardless of who they are by what they've done before. If you knew some of the stupid things I've done, and I'm not talking criminal, you know, well, maybe like juvenile criminal. High school, we tip over porta potties, we call them bucks around here. I don't know what you call them, but you know, the big plastic porta potties. We call them bucks. That's a famous company out west here, like the deer buck. But I've made a lot of mistakes. More than I care to admit, and there's a lot of them that you know I hope my kids never find out about. I've, I've shared most with them, but there's there's things in my past. There's probably things in your past. Strawberry shortcake. Yes, strawberry shortcake in your past. I do. I got a lot of strawberry shortcake. I can even sing you the song, Squirrel, Squirrel. So I'm sure even though you have some things in your past that you're not proud of, we all do, right? So where am I going with this? With this here shave video? Something I've thought about and wanted to talk about before. It's something I've thought about and talked to people about. Some of them very candidly, um, the people who I consider my, my friends, um, I definitely had a very open conversation. When it comes to people in this community, and I'm speaking directly to the wet sh shaver. No artisan is perfect. No artisan or vendor has done everything 100% right. Started wet shaving about 10 years ago, got involved in the community only a few years ago as a voyeur in the community as of probably seven years ago, eight years ago. I might edit this next part out. When I first came into the community, it was right after a lot of the drama that I'm trying to be careful with my words because I don't want to step on any toes. Um, even though it's one of the subjects that I'm going to and uh, whatever. When I first came into this community it was right after a whole bunch of drama that had gone on. And the things that had happened, looking back, are things that I probably would have done too. I don't know to a lot of you, I'm not making any sense right now. And when people talk about an artisan's past, the things they've done eight, ten years ago, that doesn't define them today. And when those people have acknowledged those mistakes, you're a coward if you bring it up, okay? When someone hasn't owned up to what they did, that's something different. But when someone owns up to what they did, and they publicly acknowledge that they made a mistake, that's when as a man, you let it go. That's how I was raised. And I know I'm cut from a different cloth than a lot of people today. I acknowledge that. What were you doing 10 years ago? All these artisans have made mistakes. Some of them have done too much fragrance and people get frag burns to the point to where people have become known for that. But there's also, you have to, you know, 
you can't look at someone's past. Like my river. I don't know how to, I don't even know why I went here because I was reading the scent notes on this and that led me to a forum and a recent forum. People were bringing up shit. Sorry. People were bringing up stuff from the past. I've got a dirty mouth, you guys. And I just don't want that to be on YouTube. Um, I want to respect, as I give you the finger, I want to respect you and your family and your home um, that you're welcoming me me into by uh watching this video and so because of that i try to be mindful of my language in my preparation today for this video i googled the scent notes for this soap awesome sauce and for perazzo green And that led me to a forum where I should have known that there was going to be trash talk. And sure enough, this guy, the way he's talking, where I come from, I don't want to put anybody down. This guy was, was talking down his nose. And just by his profile picture alone, you can see that he's he's so young and nothing against youthful people, but just by his profile picture alone, that when the things he was talking about happened, he was probably 12 years old. Now I try not to talk about things that I don't know anything about. I always try to be the last person to speak in a room when things get serious, even though most of the time I'm the first guy to talk. But when things get serious, you know, I've learned with my age, right? When I was 25, first one to chime in oh here's my opinion now no so this guy's running his mouth about how this artisan had done him wrong and things in the past this is adjustable I'm gonna loosen up just a scotch I should have done it earlier for this cleanup especially I wanted to though So, I know I'm probably rambling and that's because I'm trying to pussyfoot around a delicate thing that always just twists my Twinkie. When people bring up things that they, one, know nothing about. They know nothing about. And then, it's something in the past. Why bring it up? Are you so small-minded? I was raised, if you don't have anything nice to say, you know how it goes, right? The rest of it. Whatever happened to that? Were any of you affected by what happened? I wasn't. I came into the community though, and I caught the, the tail end of it all. And because of it, I actually formed my opinion of somebody based on the opinions of others. And over the course of the next couple of years, I learned how wrong those people were, which is why I now no longer frequent certain forums that I used to frequent because there's too many people talking out their nose. Which is typical, comes along with men, right? towel in my pocket. Those strange lits feel like they were made for that razor, the Ascension Select. It's epic. If you're looking for a new razor, it's only about 50 bucks. 
maybe the cheapest of all the ascension razors. Amazing shaver. It's a stainless steel handle. Um, it is like a, a Zamac head. I don't care about your past. I don't care what you do in the privacy of your own home. And that's between you, God, the people you live with, and the local uh, law enforcement. Not my problem. All that matters to me, though, is how you treat me. And, and you know, really, that's, 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 that's all that's my business. Let's get into the post shave. Give me one second. I've had the soap ever since it came out. As soon as it came out, I knew I had to have it. I probably would have bought it alone just because Chris was on the label, and the label is so cool. No matter what it, the fragrance was. Like I was saying a minute ago, I had been just using my green my Perazzo green, but a while back I needed to pick up something else to get some free shipping and it had been on my list of things to eventually pick up, so I picked it up and I, I had the sample when it first came out about the soap and the little one dollar sample. So I knew what I was missing and uh, it smells a lot like Perazzo green, except for one benefit. It lasts for hours. It lasts all day. That's one of the always the big downsides of Perazzo Green is that it only lasts an hour or so, and then the projection, um, you know, how, how far you could smell it was just you know on the skin or near the skin. You had to get close to the person to smell it, which is fine. Uh, you know, low scent profile, whatever word you want to use for it. This, the projection, isn't like in your face. Um, it's typical of Phoenix, a medium projection, but the duration is six to 12 hours easy. Um, for me, it's it lasts an entire work day. If I put it on in the morning, uh, my wife can still smell it on her face when I get on my face when I get home. Something I did do. Let me pause it real quick. I gotta grab something. Something I did do when it first came out was I picked up the EDP and the solid cologne. I'm a huge fan of Phoenix's perfumes and solids. And when it came out, I knew I had to have it. And good thing, I was just wanting to build upon my Perazzo Green experience. And so that's why I picked up the soap, but I didn't pick up the splash of the star jelly. I still need to get the star jelly. Excuse me, I like to collect them all. I like to have a splash with the star jelly. And I find they really complement each other really well. You can use, you know, use the star jelly alone, or use it with the splash. And I think they go great together. There's a lot of skin food in both of them. So, blah blah blah. I'm down off my soapbox from a minute ago. My my rambling like a tyrant, a lunatical, rambling like a lunatic. I should leave that up to my dog. So I just thought. I'd just, Everybody always wonders like how you use a solid, blah, blah, blah. So I just thought I'd show you guys how I use the two in conjunction. And so EDP, put it down a little bit. I basically just use it the way that you would any EDP. I like to get a little bit right in here, close to the body. Spritz, spritz, wind carried away. Give me another spritz because I lost most of it. And then I might throw one up underneath the shirt. I'm up, like, you know, mid chest. Spurt. Usually I'll do one squirt up high, one squirt down low against the skin, and then one or two on the shirt that I'm wearing. And that stuff lasts eight to 12 hours easily. And it's got a, a, a good solid medium projection on it. Solid colognes, 
the projection, how far away you can smell it from the person who's wearing it. The projection isn't very far. Uh, solid colognes are a very intimate, personal experience. So what I like to do is just get a little bit on my finger, and I got strawberry shortcake on this one. I open myself up. This is what happens when you ask your daughter to get you a Band-Aid. So I just kind of thin it out, and I'm gonna go up and behind the ear. Down, down on the lobe, up and behind the ear. And I'll do the same thing over here, up and behind the ear. And then a lot of times what I like to do too, especially one like this, my wife, this is one of her favorite fragrances. And so I'll do a real thin layer. There, that finger. And on the wrists. So put a little bit there, I rub it together, right? And then, so this stuff is actually, I'm like, I'm not kidding. It's an amazing beard balm. I'm not gonna use it as a beard balm today. I actually have the beard balm at home and I plan to include it along with some shave of the day photos that I'm gonna do later for Instagram and maybe even have on this video. But I do. I like to get some there on my, my tickler. Don't taste it. Jeez, man, what are you doing? Freaking wacko. So, hopefully when I go back and watch this, my rambling wasn't too ignorant. And, uh, awesome sauce. It's freaking awesome. If I was gonna name it, I'd call it freaking awesome sauce. Get you some. Don't judge people by their past. See the good in them and what their future has in store. Look for the best in people. Look for the good in people. Don't. What, it's so easy to look for the negative. Why, why look for the negative? It's so easy. So easy. And if you're going to judge people by the past, I'm sorry, man. You got a long road ahead of you. Until next time. Be excellent to each other. Quote, Ted Theodore Logan. Be excellent to each other. Dude.